my wife number two. May I ask again in this na class? My gun do them. They want shank them in do to bar. Would you believe what a water mean? This not bay and do. Medic midday. This one done. He's old midday we are. My name is uh, the man from the upright light. Uh, I am uh, from the wolf clan. And my, my blood comes from uh, Newa Shingdami, which is the territory we are sitting in right now. Uh, I am Ojibwe, Bodawatami, and Nishnabe. And I am a member of the uh, Midaywin uh, Lodge. Eastern doorway. Uh, so, I've been asked here by my my niece to uh, to tell the story that was related to me when I was a child, four or five, and and it's about this area here. Uh, this area that we're we're in is right now is presently the park. At one time. This area was also known as Clay Banks. And uh, just about uh, 50 yards back in the bush there is the original sugar bush of our people. Now, uh, the story I'm going to relate to you was told to me by one of my great aunts, but it was actually, uh, there's an article down at the Bruce Museum, uh, written by uh, my uh, uncle, uh, Lawrence Kishik. And uh, so the way it goes is that uh, my uh, great grandfather, John Wesley, he had, his father was Peter Kishik, and Peter Kishik had, uh, had uh, some boys. And one of them was was John Wesley. The other one was uh, Edward Kishik. Uh, his uh, Nishnabe nose wind was uh, Kagige Manado, Forever Spirit. And uh, Kagige Manado had uh, uh, two boys and a girl. Uh, the first boy was Willis. Kishik. The second boy was uh, was Lawrence Kishik. Their daughter was uh, Lillian Kishik. Uh, Lawrence Kishik uh, was uh, was also uh, known to be a, a teacher. Uh, he was uh, assigned to some day schools up around uh, Shawnee. Soxing area, but his uh, father, Edward Kishik, he married into the Jones family, which is uh, Marie Jones, and I believe that she was uh, she was sister to uh, to Charles Kigudos Jones, and so that this is where the connection is because it actually is related to. Uh, Charles Kigodos Jones when he was a child. So Charles Kigodos was born in the 1850s, early 1850s. So he was uh, a toddler, I guess maybe about three or four, maybe five, when they were in this area uh, making their maple syrup, and, which is what the whole reserve used to do. They used to all come over here, move over here for the entire length of the maple syrup run. And, and in that, they would move everything. So they would be living in their, in, outside in the lodges that they made, uh, whether it was tents or, or the uh, traditional lodges. But they would make camp over here. And they would stay, you know, until the sap was all, all collected and uh, turned into... Uh, syrup and, and maple sugar and so it was that uh, like uh, if you know what what time of year the sap starts running is it's right uh, the last week in uh, February 
first week in uh, in March is when it starts to run. But at that time, you can also see that there is still a lot of snow that is on the ground. And, and the weather changes quite readily, you know, from day to day in March. Uh, and so some days it'll be nice and shiny, and then other days it'll be really cold. You could get, uh, you know, the odd snowstorm and all this. And it was still cold so that the ice is still on the bay. And uh, so um, what it was is that they were had been already over here, you know, better part of a week or more, maybe more, because it's getting close to the end of the to the sap run, and they're running short on food. They're starting to have to uh, ration out food, you know, and, and be very careful of how much they were eating because they were going to run out, and and this became a very concern of. Uh, Charles Kigunos' grandfather. And so he was worried. You could see the worry on his on his face. And you could hear the whispers amongst the community where people were getting kinda kinda edgy on you know what was going to happen. And and then what happened uh, is the north wind came up. And this bay that we're, we're situated on faces the north and the north wind came in and he waited and it blew hard and it blew all the ice into the bay blocking the people's you know way to the main village which is called uh, it's Cape and uh, so it blocked it and now everybody was you know really concerned because how long was this ice going to stay, you know? And if they were to walk around the bay, it was going to take them a couple of days. And a lot of the old, old folks might not make it, be able to make that walk. And then plus they had to consider that they had all the children, all the babies here too. And so then it really became concerned. And so Charles King, Kigiros, he noticed that his grandfather started carving something and he followed him all over the place as he's carving because he's thinking that he's going to be given a toy and and what is being carved it's a little paddle on a cedar and he's looking at it and he can hardly wait until it's finished so that he could get his toy and early the next day is uh, he wakes up and he spots his grandfather taking this paddle into the forest. And he followed him. And as he started following, he starts making his way up the escarpment. And then he realizes that maybe he shouldn't be following. And he shouldn't be watching what his grandfather was doing. And so his grandfather, what he ended up doing, as he got, once he got to the top of the cliff, he made a tobacco offer in a prayer, and he laid this paddle down as an offering to the spirits. And after he was finished his prayer, he walked down to where the village where they, where they were camped, and he told everybody to prepare your canoes and leave it. And they all looked and there was still ice in the bay, but they listened to it because back then you listened to your elders when you were when they spoke. And so he got, he told them to make their canoes all ready. And as they started packing up the canoes and all that, uh, Jawanon, the wind from the south, she blows and she pushes all the ice out making a pathway straight to the main village and so all everybody got loaded up their canoes and they proceeded across sydney bay in 
to the McGregor Harbor and to safety. You know? And then it said that when the last canoe hit there, is the north wind blew back all the ice and, and closed it. And so, so this that's a story that I was told when I, when I was you know five and six, and that was told to me by uh, my great aunt, and then later I was able to confirm that through an article that was at uh, the Bruce uh, County Museum in, in Southampton. Oh, hopefully, quite a